मैं सर डॉक्टर के वैष्णव अलमराज हूँ इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एरोनाटिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग तुंडीगल हाइड्रोबॉर्ड इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी बेंडिंग स्ट्रेसेस इन अनसिमेट्रिकल सेक्शंस एंड वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम्स इन दिस फॉर अनसिमेट्रिकल सेक्शंस सो द कोर्स आउटकम फॉर दिस टॉपिक इज रिलेटेड टू the course outcome number 4 and outcome is apply the knowledge of theories of failure shear force and bending moment relations for analyzing the flexural stress shear stress distributions and failure of beam sections and the bloom taxonomy level is uh, to the level of apply level here to stop it now let us begin the unsymmetric sections problem here it is the unsymmetric section about the x axis there is a neutral axis parallel to axis x so here let me read the problem a cast iron beam is of i section is shown in figure the beam is a simply supported beam on a span of 5 meters the length of the beam is 5 meters if the tensile stress is not to exceed 20 newton per square millimeter find the safe uniformly load which the beam can carry find also the maximum compressive stress the two objectives are one is safe uniformly load safe uniform load is small w the beam can carry and also find also the maximum compressive stress what is sigma c these two objectives here the input parameters are one is tensile stress if the tensile stress is not to exceed 20 newton per mm square 20 newton per square millimeter but the span of the simply supported beam here it is 5 meters is the span now what to be found sigma c now here the point is that we know the pure bending equation that is sigma by y equal to m by i equal to e by r where m is the moment of resistance and i is area moment of inertia and y is the maximum distance from the neutral axis distance from neutral axis to the topmost fiber where sigma is the bending stress here there is not mention the what is the e modulus of elasticity value and the radius of curvature due to the applying the load so how to calculate first we have to find out the location of the neutral axis here the location of neutral axis is given that is bar y here it is 90.66 mm from the base axis xx in this i section there are two on is the two flanges are there the flange one is denoted with the bottom flange is section 1 top flange is denoted with uh, 3 and the number the web is denoted with the 2 so already found but what to be found here the moment of inertia is to be calculated the moment of inertia here it is i equal to i1 plus i2 plus and i3 what is i moment of inertia by using the parallel axis theorem and parallel axis the i11 equal to ig x1 plus a1 into bar y bar minus y1 whole square in the same manner ig x2 i2 what about i2 i2 equal to ig x2 plus a2 times y bar minus y2 whole square so the sum of all the after substitution of bar y and y1 uh, the y1 is here is the distance from topmost the bottommost axis to the centroid that is y1 equal to 40 by 2 let us begin now the length of the beam it is a 5 meters and the maximum tensile stress here it is 20 newton per mm square now we have to calculate first we have to calculate already calculation yes in the neutral axis here it is 90.66 
but how to already yeah in the figure it is not shown actually but the point is that we have to calculate find out the location of the neutral axis the neutral axis is that is a1 y1 plus there are three sections a1 a2 a3 that means y1 y2 y3 that is the distance from to area of section 1 to the centroid of each individual that is the y1 this is y1 and what is y2 here it is y2 is again the centroid this distance from centroid of section 2 to top bottommost this is y2 and what is y3 the y3 is the distance from the centroid of the section 3 to the bottommost layer that is y3 okay Thus, you have to find out y1, y2, y3. So, a1 area of section 1, the section 1 of area is 40 multiplied by 160. What is y1? This cg here, distance of this cg to topmost part that is y by 2, 40 by 2, y1 equal to 40 by 2 plus a2 area of section 2 that is 200 millimeter length. 20 millimeter width, this is the area of section 2. 200 mm divided multiplied by 20 millimeter. Y2, Y2 means is the distance of the central point to this is Y2. This Y2 comes how 40 millimeters plus this distance. The distance is 200 by 2. 40 plus 200 by 2. This portion is y2 is the portion for y1 okay next a3 what is a3 20 times is the section that is 20 times 80 18 to 20 so what about y3 the y3 is cj of this point to here y3 how it comes y3 40 plus 200 plus 20 by 2 40 plus 200 plus 20 by 2 that is a1 y1 plus a2 y2 plus a3 y3 by a1 plus a2 plus a3 what is a1 116 to 40 is the a1 220 is the a2 and 80 times 20 is the a3 so then after substitution then you got the value of 90.6 from the top bottom most layer to the neutral axis this 90.6 is the neutral axis distance location of the neutral axis so now this is the now neutral axis lies from bottommost layer that is 90.66 millimeter from the topmost layer. What is the total distance from topmost? 200 plus 40 plus 20, 260 minus 90.66. Then it happens 169.34 millimeter. 169.34 millimeter is the distance of topmost layer from the neutral axis is the 169.34 90.66 millimeter from the bottommost layer 169.34 is the topmost layer that is now we want in the pure bending equation sigma by y that equal to m by i this y is the maximum distance y maximum that y max comes that is the distance of maximum from what is the maximum value of the bar y from topmost layer that is 169.34 that is 169.34 millimeter that is actually one has to take but depends upon the value of consideration where we have to take the maximum compressive stress you have to consider when the load is applied on the topmost layers suppose we consider the beam is a simple supported beam when the load is applied here, when the load is applied, what will happen? The topmost layers experiences, topmost layers experiences compressive stress, and whereas the bottommost layer experiences tensile stress. So where it has been asked, that is important here. Then according to that, we consider the value of the y and substitute back in the equation of a pure bending equation in order to calculate the required stress. Now, that is what we have considered the bar when 
After knowing that we want area moment of inertia, that is, as we know, the concepts of the mechanics of moment of inertia, that is, I equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Okay. What is I value here? I1 means moment of inertia of a bottom flange about neutral axis. This is the neutral axis moment of area from area moment of inertia of bottom flange. This is the bottom flange. This bottom flange moment of inertia according to parallax theorem moment of inertia I equal to IGX1 that is amount about parallel to x-axis moment of inertia of individual section about neutral axis plus about its individual neutral individual centroidal axis plus a1 into bar y minus y1 whole square or distance from neutral axis to this distance that is the bar y of this for this calculation so now moment of inertia that is igx1 about the center that is bd cube by 12 160 into 40 cube by 12 bd cube by 12 this value comes b1 d1 cube by 12 what about this value area b1 into d1 what about this value bar y y bar is 90.66 minus y1 what is the y1 here 20 how it comes the distance from neutral axis to this distance so this is uh, this is now we know that 90.66 minus is the total distance the total distance from here to here is 90.66 we want this value so you have to sub, uh, subtract 90.66 from this value that value is 20 90.66 minus 20 whole square after substitution and simplification after calculating the values obtained here it is 3280 7481.17 millimeter per four, 4 next moment of inertia of uh, next one we want i2 that is the moment of inertia of the web about neutral axis there are i section consists of two flanges bottom flange and top flange and also one more thing is there that is a web now moment of inertia of web about neutral axis that is again moment of inertia of web about its cg centroid center of gravity the mesh cg plus a2 times distance of its cg from neutral axis so moment of inertia of its web about its cg that is individual now here now about this point we want about cg we want this distance neutral axis to here now the individual cg here it is the individual cg this is the point that is bd cube by 12 again b2 d2 cube by by 12 b2 is the 200 b2 is here it is 20 millimeter and d2 is 200 cube by 12 what is the area b2 into d2 and y bar minus y1 here y2 is the distance what is the y2 distance this is 140 minus 90.66 square after substitution we got i the value of the i2 that is 2307107.73 millimeter per 4 similarly in the same methodology we have to calculate i3 the i3 equal to what is the i3 means moment of inertia of bottom flange top flange about neutral axis so here the neutral axis of about neutral axis but it is a top flange the top flange is the section 3 we want this the distance from here it is about neutral axis that is 169.3 yes let us begin again the formula is remain same moment of top flange about its centroid plus a3 times the distance of its c is e from neutral axis that is b2 d2 cube by 12 what is the b2 80 d2 cube 20 cube by 12 into area b2 into d2 this is the distance what is the distance y bar minus y3 bar y minus y3 or y3 minus y bar because whole square 
the negative whole square means it becomes positive no effect of the negativity now here what is the y3 the y3 is calculated from here the bottom lines to y3 minus so what is y3 equal to y3 means 40 plus 200 plus 20 by 2 then the value comes as 250 50 minus this distance then only this distance comes that is the distance from neutral axis to the CG of the uh, section 3 that is here that is mean how it comes this is the value the total value is 250 minus 250 minus 90.66 then the obtained value here it is okay you can see that the distance of the CG from neutral axis after calculating the value of I3 becomes 406761010.29 millimeter per 4 and the sum of total moment of inertia I equal to sum of I1, I2 and I3 where I1 is the moment of inertia of bottom flange, I2 is the moment of inertia of web, I3 is the moment of inertia of top flange. After substitution the total summation of total moment of inertia that is 9655467.21 mm per 4. Now again why we have calculated this value in the pure bending equation sigma by y equal to m by i. In order to calculate the sigma we have to know what is the moment of resistance, area moment of inertia and the maximum distance from the neutral axis or a distance from neutral axis to topmost fiber. So, so far we calculated the value of the y, y comes from the location of the neutral axis and i mass moment of area moment of inertia that has been calculated by using parallel axis theorem that is i equal to igx plus area times the distance from neutral distance from cg of the individual section about the neutral axis. Now the third parameter is required that is m. Now here the maximum that is the m has to be calculated. Now uh, how to calculate m? For it is here, here it is a simply supported beam the tensile stress will be at the bottom fiber extreme bottom fiber tensile stress will be at the extreme bottom fiber and compressive stress will be extreme top fiber. Why? Because the beam is consists of the I section, but the effect is that this is the beam, I section of beam. When it is the load is acting UDL, the load is acting, the topmost fibers it will bend. The topmost fiber experiences compressive stress, and the bottommost fibers experiences tensile stress. Now, so hence for maximum tensile stress, that is maximum tensile stress is experienced at the bottommost, that is 90.66 millimeter. So, why is the distance of extreme fiber, extreme bottom from that neutral axis? From here, we are going to find out the moment of resistance from the given data. So, sigma t was given, then why becomes where it is experiencing the tensile stress at the bottommost fiber, the value of yt is 90.66 millimeter. Okay, then m equal to sigma by sigma over y times i. What is sigma? That is sigma here, it is tensile stress that was given here 20 newton per square millimeter. I value, we know the I value. The value of I is 9655, 9655467.21 mm per 4. What about Y value? Y value where it is experiencing tensors at the bottom, that is what bottom distance was covered. Thus, by using this data, we calculated the moment of resistance. The moment of resistance for this year it is 213003893.85 Newton millimeter. Now we want uniformly distributed load moment of resistance. Okay, then the maximum bending moment we know that W L square by 8, small w L square by 8, that is small w is the UDL uniformly distributed load, time L is the span. 
So m equal to this value, what is the m value here? It is w and square by 8. We know the L value that is uh, 5 meters given and W can be calculated. Now, W L square by 8, that is W L square by 8 equal to, that is W into 25 uh, meters, it is Newton meters, so multiplied by 1000, that is 5 square, the 1000 by 8, that is Newton millimeter, that is equal to 3125 W, small w, Newton millimeter. That 3125 small w equal to 21300, 3, 3, 21300, 3891.95 value. From that, we can calculate the unknown value required that is uniformly distribu distributed load that equal to 6816.125 Newton millimeters. Here it comes Newton per millimeter. Not if it comes more value, then make it convert into meters value. So now, this is the object to us ask. And one more thing, it is asked that compressive stress. We know that M value, M by I equal to sigma by Y. Then, the moment of resistance M value is, here it is, 21300, 3891.85 by I value. The I value here it is calculated as 9655 4667. 9655 Now, sigma C we want compressive stress where it occurs compressive stress on the top extreme topmost fiber. That means YC becomes this. That the, what is the YC now? That is 169.34. From this, we can calculate the sigma c, that is the compressive stress experiencing over the topmost extreme topmost fiber. Yes, that is the objective. Now we want maximum compressive stress. So, for maximum compressive stress, what is the distance from neutral axis to maximum compressive stress? Maximum compressive stress is occurring on the topmost fiber. That distance we need, that is what y is. That is from what is the y means distance from neutral axis to topmost fiber or bottommost fiber depends upon the, uh, the requirement. Now, here it is y equal to 169.34. Now, in this formula, substituting the theory of pure bending formula of substituting sigma becomes sigma c. That sigma c equal to m by i into yc. Now, substitution then you can got we got it that is the the compressive stress value is 37.357 Newton per square millimeter sigma c. Here the unit for sigma c is Newton per square millimeter. Newton, you know, unit for m, what is the m value? Here it is maximum bending moment r moment of resistance that is newton millimeter where i second moment of area that is mm for 4 and that is the y y is the distance from neutral axis to the topmost fiber that is mm millimeters these are all the units so in this problem the required data here it is asked the inputs are the geometry of the i section and the maximum tensile stress was given and the span of the beam and also the data was given here it is um, it is what type of beam the beam here it is the simply supported beam but a simply supported beam and it is subjected to uniformly distributed load throughout the span of the beam so the, the span of the beam here it is given as the value of five meters so by using the data and by using the concepts of centroid and look, uh, we have located the location of the neutral axis after that, from that centroidal value of the centroid, our location of the neutral axis, and we calculated from that the area moment of inertia, and from the formula of, I mean, from the pure bending formula, we found uh, what uh, the type of moment of resistance and also the nature of the stress on the topmost fiber. The nature of the stress on the topmost fiber here it is the compressive nature and the bottom fiber it is tensile nature coming to the next problem uh, the model here it is uh, 
the section here it is unsymmetrical section and the beam here it is the cast iron beam so the beam again here in this problem it is here it is it is a simply supported beam the span of 8 meters the huge long and the beam carries again uniformly distributed load of 1.5 kN per meter length on the entire span so what to be found here the, we have to find out the maximum tension and compressive stresses now the beam section is the T section and it is subjected to like that just by glands physical glands it is a T section of the beam the T section of the beam okay the T section of the beam subjected to the length T section of the beam so when it is the T section of the beam here it is simply supported it is simply supported and the load uniformly distributed load throughout the span the uniformly distributed load here it is 1.5 kN per meter what is the span of the beam? The span of the beam is 80 meters, that is 8000 millimeters. Now, is the section of the beam? Yes, how to calculate? When it is a section, then the UDL is acting, the T section will bend. The T section will bend. The T section will bend like that. In proportionately, the bending of the beam takes place. Okay, the T section will bend like that. Same T section will be there. So the topmost layer experiences compressive stress, and the bottom layers of the beam experiences uh, tensile stress. So then, what to do? We have to find out again location of the neutral axis. It is the neutral axis of the section. After calculating the neutral axis, then we can know it bar y. And after knowing the bar y, moment of inertia has to be calculated. The moment of inertia here it is i equal to i1 plus i2 because section 1, this is section 1 and here it is section 2. So let us begin to calculate the location of the neutral axis. Location of the neutral axis can be done by using the centroid formula. It is bar y equal to a1 y1 plus a2 y2 by a1 plus a2. Okay, what is the a1? Again, section 1, a1 y1, that is 100 times 20. What is y1? Distance from bottom axis to the centroid, that is 80 plus 20 by 2. Next, a2, 18 to 20, section 2, area of the section 2, 80 by 2 by 2. And sum of a1 plus a2, then bottom from bottom axis the centroid of this t section here it is uh, 67.77 and from topmost layer what is the bar y that is 100 minus 67.7 then it is 32.23 millimeters so when it experiences tensile in our simple bending formula uh, sigma by y equal to sigma by y equal to m by i equal to e by r sigma by y equal to m by i this y becomes top more bottommost layer experiences tensile y becomes yt y that is y equal to 67.77 millimeters for calculating sigma t that is the tensile stresses on the bottommost layer compressive stress on the topmost layer while calculating sigma c compressive stress on top topmost layers then y becomes the value of 32.23 millimeters. Now, after calculating neutral axis, this is 32.23 millimeters from the top face. On the bottom face, it is 67.77. Now, we want, uh, we have to calculate uh, area moment of inertia, that is i equal to i1 plus i2. After knowing the, the parallel axis theorem, and then I1 equal to moment of inertia of the top flange about neutral axis that is um, top flange about neutral axis that is moment of inertia of the top flange about its centroid plus A1 times distance of its CZ from neutral axis whole square that is BD cube by 12 what is I1 BD cube 100 into 20 cube by 12 
that is the B, here it is the B1, it is a D1, B1, D1 cube by 12. 100 into 20 cube by 12 plus area B1 into D1. What is the B1 into D1? 100 into 20 plus. What is the distance from this point to neutral axis? That is represent. That means here 32.23 minus 10. 32.23 is the distance total minus this value, that is 10 value. Then we can get it, the value of the neutral axis. Then after getting that I1, uh, calculating I1 value becomes 10550 12.5 millimeter per four. Next I2 value, the I2 is a moment of inertia of the web about neutral axis. So moment of inertia of the web about its center of gravity plus A2 times distance of its CZ from neutral axis. So the value of the I2 becomes 20872099.9 millimeter per four. Then moment of inertia I equal to I1 plus I2. Then I equal I1 plus I2. That is 10550125.2.5 times plus I2 value. That is 20872099.9. After then the total I value becomes 31. Total I value becomes 314222.4 millimeter per four. Then we know the total sum of I and Y values. Now, the final step, next step is that moment of resistance is to be calculated. The moment of resistance M equal to WL squared by 8. What is the W given here? 1500 uh, L square, that is 8 square by 8. That is 12,000 Newton meters convert into millimeter because to maintain the dimensional homogeneity, that is 12,000 times 1000. 12 into 10 for 6 Newton millimeter. We know that M by I equal to sigma Y depends upon the value of the stress. We want maximum tensile stress. It happens in the top, the topmost fiber that Y becomes the topmost fiber distance that is 67.77. M is 12,000. I value same is the property of the section that is the property of the material that is 314.4. And Y becomes topmost fiber distance from neutral axis to that is 67.7, that is called tensile stress. That is 258.81 Newton per square millimeter. And one more thing is that very important. We want compressive stress. The compressive experiences by topmost. The topmost layers experiences the compressive. When the beam is like that, when it is UDL, it bends. So uh, topmost layers experiences compressive. The bottom most experiences tensile. Now we want the topmost fiber, then sigma becomes a sigma t, and y becomes the distance from where the tensile, ex, tensile stress experiences is there or compressive stress experience here. Sigma becomes sigma c and compressive stress experience is 32.23 from neutral axis. Then y becomes is the 32.23 millimeters. So after substituting y becomes y c and m is uh, 12,000 times 12 into 10 power 6 i value and y value then the sigma it becomes compressive stress sigma becomes sigma c that is 123.08 newton per square millimeter now the value of the tensile stress is maximum here 258.81 and the value of compressive stress is 123.08 so why here it is the value becomes changed because the bending stress value is proportional is dependent on the distance from neutral axis to the fiber distance. Why tensile stress value is larger because the y value is more that is 67.77. And what about why compressive stress is low value in relation to the tensile stress because the y value is here it is 32.23 that means half of that. So that's why the tensile stress value sigma t is larger than the compressive stress value sigma c. Because y, y t is greater than y c. Okay, that's why the values of compressive stress is less than the tensile stress value. So, uh, in this session, we have covered unsymmetrical sections. Unsymmetrical sections.
consider the asymmetrical section of I section and T sections about axis that is neutral axis parallel to X axis. And we solve the problem of uh, first problem in I section we calculate the uniformly distributed load and in the second section T section we calculate the tensile stress and compressive stress. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.